In a recent interview to a Malayalam magazine, the chairperson of ISRO, S. Somnath, outlined some of ISRO's upcoming future missions that the agency is currently working on. There are some orbital missions. There were also some updates to planned missions, but there are also some orbital missions, satellite missions, engineering experiments in orbit, and more. There is also, of course, the next Chandrayaan, which will be Chandrayaan 4, along with Japan, the next Mars mission, which will be a lander, and the very first Venus orbiter. This was confirmed to the print by Ms. Nigar Shahji as well, whose interview will be linked below. She is the program director for all planetary and interplanetary missions for ISRO. So why did the agency wait for so long to go to Venus? Why are other space agencies not exploring Venus and why does everyone seem to prefer Mars? Both Venus and Mars were similar to Earth in the past with oceans of water and breathable atmosphere. Venus is technically on average much closer in distance to Earth as well as compared to Mars. But agencies like NASA are planning to send missions and have sent missions to as far away as Jupiter and Saturn, but for some reason not Venus. The answers are surprising and unexpected and tell a lot about the future of the exploration of the solar system for us humans. While there have been about 60 or so missions to Mars, there have been less than 45 to explore Venus. Venus on average is about 40 million kilometers away from Earth, whereas Mars on average is about 225 million kilometers away. So Mars is technically much further away from Earth than Venus is typically for the entire year. But we know that Mars is much more conducive to life. It is at a distance from the sun where there is enough chances of water being present in the past or in the future. And Mars is also cold, unlike Venus, which is hot, like hot, hot. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system, although Mercury is closer to the sun. But Venus, often also called Earth's twin because of similar gravity, mass and size, is still hundreds of degrees warmer than the surface of Mercury when it faces the sun. During the day, Mercury's surface temperatures could get up to as high as 420 degrees Celsius and at night, away from the sun, it can get to as low as minus 120 degrees Celsius. But Venus on average has a surface temperature, whether day or night, of 470 degrees Celsius. This makes its surface the hottest planet in our solar system and famously hot enough to melt lead. Why is Venus's surface so hot? The answer lies in the fact that Venus has clouds, kilometers thick layers of clouds made up of carbon dioxide. When we observe Venus from Earth, we can't really see its surface at all. We can only see a hazy white disk and that is because the planet is covered with clouds and a thick atmosphere made up of noxious gases, primarily greenhouse gases, which trap all heat within. Many climate scientists look to Venus as the future model of how Earth would end up if no changes are made in time to emissions around the globe. So, while lack of atmosphere on Mercury and the Moon causes their temperature to drop to precipitously low numbers, Earth and Venus have an atmosphere that can regulate temperature between day and night. For now on Earth, we have warmth even at night, whereas in Venus, it is unbearable for missions and instruments and even so at night. Incidentally, Mars was not the first planet to be explored. After the moon, humans sent missions and spacecraft to Venus first to orbit and then to land and Venus in fact became the first planet to have missions in the solar system. But these missions showed that Venus is not an easy planet to explore. The longest that any lander has survived on the surface of Venus was for 127 minutes before getting fried by the intense surface heat. The former Soviet Union sent a bunch of spacecraft in the 60s and 70s to both land on Venus and orbit it before pausing this program, the Venera program. 
there is now an upcoming Russian mission to study Venus, which is a continuation of the Venera program. It will be called Venera D and that itself is expected to last on the surface just for about an hour. Everything that we just saw was just about survival of a metal body, a spacecraft on the surface of Venus. On Venus, spacecraft survive for mere hours, while on Mars, we can already see that the missions that we send to the surface survive and function very well for years and years and even decades. So right there already, there is scientific and economic advantages for exploring Mars. But to get to the survival point, missions actually need to land on the surface. We know enough of how to do it well on Mars with its very low atmosphere, but Venus is a whole other matter. Descending through kilometers thick clouds of noxious fumes and gases and, and acids not just damages the physical structures of mission, it also leads to loss of signal consistently. Additionally, as a spacecraft descends lower and lower towards the surface of Venus, the weight of all of the clouds above build up and the pressure on the spacecraft increases. This then also requires really, really expensive and powerful and strong heat shields. On top of everything for Venus, the lack of visibility makes it difficult to both autonomously steer and land on the surface or to pre-program a landing site. And further, it makes it almost impossible to obtain solar power after landing. Because of all of this heat and likely global volcanism, which completely causes a change to the entire surface rock of Venus every 300 million years or so, we don't really believe that life has the potential to exist on the surface right now. If it does, there is a very low probability that it does. And even if it does, there's nothing that we can really do because our technology to land on the surface has not come up to a certain level that we require yet. But the atmosphere of Venus, now that is a completely different matter again. The atmosphere of Venus spans to about 350 kilometers above the surface. But at a height of about 50 kilometers from the surface, scientists think that the atmospheric conditions here are very similar to the surface of Earth. And therefore, especially considering that there could be humidity and droplets of water, scientists think that there is potential for microbial life to exist here. The cloud tops of Venus is today considered a kind of good candidate in the solar system for exploration for biosignatures. Biosignatures are evidence of life, so to speak, and recently, even as recently as 2020, scientists detected phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Of course, a flurry of activity followed. This was refuted and then more phosphine was detected elsewhere and was explained away as something else. But so far, nothing is convincing or conclusive yet about phosphine. We have in fact had a couple of pure science videos on this whole subject when all of this went down so please do have a look if you're interested. But going to this region and exploring the atmosphere of Venus could give us more insights into whether bacterial life could exist here. And that brings us to Shukrayan. Shukra of course obviously means Venus in Sanskrit and the mission will officially be named VOM or Venus Orbiter Mission just like Mangalyaan is officially named Mars Orbiter Mission. This mission will be an orbiter and it will not really be looking for life at this point. While it will try to determine whether phosphine exists or not, Shukrayan will primarily focus on the surface of the planet and its atmosphere. Its orbit is expected to be at a height of about 500 kilometers from the surface and it could launch either the end of next year, 2024, or all the way in 2031. It is not yet confirmed. The mission will focus on understanding the surface of the planet and changes on the surface of the planet, the geomorphology due to global volcanism. It will also study the atmospheric chemistry and dynamics of gases in the atmosphere and how they change between layers. And thirdly, it will study the interaction of charged particles from the sun, solar wind and also solar irradiance, just solar energy 
on the atmosphere of Venus, specifically the ionosphere. This mission didn't come out of the blue. It's been in the works for almost 11 years now and it is expected to carry about 100 kilos of science experiments from various countries. A majority of these so far have been from India. There have been over 20 that have been finalized to be shortlisted and many others are from other countries like Russia, France, Sweden, Germany and more. In fact, there could also be a potential NASA payload on board when the spacecraft actually flies. We don't know when that exactly is going to happen. So far, we know that some payloads are in the design process. Funds were disbursed for this mission in 2017, but for this, the formal approval of the mission is still pending and awaited, although it doesn't seem to be stopping ISRO leaders from talking about the mission. They do reveal details in passing in various interviews like they typically do, and as they continue to do so, we will get more and more information to piece together the status of this mission and learn when it will actually launch.